After 18 days of national strike in Ecuador, an agreement has been reached between the key organizations behind the strike and the government. The citizens who braved fierce repression and violence on the streets for more than two weeks have emerged victorious. The strike that began on June 13th, characterized by massive protests and roadblocks across the country, was organized by indigenous, peasant, and Afro-descendant organizations. Cuando pedimos justicia, somos vándalos. Cuando pedimos justicia, somos delincuentes. Pero cuando los campesinos llevamos los productos y vendemos a lo más barato, ¿cómo nos, tra cómo nos tratan? Indios. No nos dejan vender en los mercados. Compañeros, entonces, ¿cómo queremos que una sociedad sea justa? Por ello hemos salido a luchar, compañeras y compañeros. Y quiero decirles, una de las formas para ser equitativos en cualquier país del mundo, ¿cuál es? Políticas que permitan sostener a los más pobres. Y en este país no existe políticas para sostener a los más pobres. Más bien hay para los grandotes. Para los grandotes, cada a cierto tiempo, te regalan cosas. En esta última remisión tributaria, 8.500 millones de dólares les regalaron. Pero a un pobre, compañeros, no hay nada. The strike ended after a deal was signed by government minister Francisco Jimenez, indigenous leader Leonidas Iza, and the head of the Episcopal Conference, Monsignor Luis Cabrera, who acted as mediator. The protests had put forward a set of 10 demands, which were the basis for the agreement with the government. A 90-day window has been given to the government to comply with the agreement. Massive marches have been going on in Quito, as well as in other major cities for almost three weeks. The Confederation of Indigenous Nationalities of Ecuador, National Confederation of Peasant, Indigenous, and Afro-Descendant Organizations, and the Council of Indigenous Evangelical Peoples and Organizations of Ecuador were the key organizers of the protests. The demands of the protesters included control of inflation, increased employment opportunities, an end to privatization of public companies, more spending on health and education, fair prices for farm produce, and an end to violence and drug trafficking. They also called for ending exploitative activities in indigenous territories and respect for the collective rights of indigenous peoples and nationalities. The protesters were also successful in compelling Lasso to increase monthly payment to poor families by 10%, to subsidize fertilizers, forgive debts of small farmers, and to double the education budget for schools teaching indigenous languages, among other measures. Una lucha jamás a una lucha se sale para estar contentos, pasan cosas dolorosas, la ciudadanía pone en concha. Mientras más largo sea la lucha, mientras más días sea, la ciudadanía queda desabastecida. Pero también esperaríamos que nos entiendan, porque los pobres no tenemos otro mecanismo. Después de hablar una vez, dos veces, ir a una mesa de diálogo y que no salga nada, pero que la crisis, la pobreza, sea más jodida para los más pobres compañeros, no tenemos otras opciones que salir a luchar. Last weekend, Lasso had attempted to quell the protests by announcing a reduction in fuel prices, but by much less than the protesters had demanded. Indigenous organizations then had rejected the announcement and said that the measure was insufficient and insensitive and did not sympathize with the situation of poverty faced by millions of families. Throughout the strike, indigenous and human rights organizations also vehemently denounced the violence and repression inflicted on protesters by state forces. According to data from the Alliance for Human Rights Organization, between June 13th and 29th, state security forces committed 76 types of human rights violations against citizens participating in the national strike. The organization also reported that six protesters were killed, 152 were detained, and 331 were injured. Organizations also criticized Interior Minister Patricio Carrillo for promoting hatred, racism, and violence against indigenous demonstrators and demanded his dismissal. They have also affirmed that the perpetrators of the physical and psychological violence against protesters must be investigated independently of the agreement.